Hello and welcome to News Click and People's Dispatch. Indian Central Trade Unions have given a massive protest call for the 2nd of August, calling all workers and trade unions to participate regardless of their affiliation in and, uh, and raise their voices against the anti-worker policies of this right-wing BJP government led by PM Narendra Modi. And to talk more about this, we have with us Dr. Hem Lata, who is the president of Centre of Indian Trade Unions. Welcome. So, uh, can you first tell us, start by telling us more about this protest and why this protest call has been given? It's basically against the, what you call the anti-worker policies, what is uh, visible by the introduction in the parliament of two codes. There is the code on wages and the code on occupational health and safety. So, these two are not meant actually for improving the conditions of the workers. Any law we think that it should improve the working conditions of the workers or expand the coverage. But instead of that what they are going to do is to restrict the benefits the workers uh, are getting today. And uh, the trade unions have been objecting to this. They were opposing to this even earlier. This is the code on wages bill. It was uh, drafted earlier and uh, the trade unions have uh, the meetings were held and the trade unions have opposed several of these things because one is that it does not uh, uh, include for the fixation of minimum wages the uh, formula decided by the Indian Labour Conference in 1957. After 1957, several times the Indian Labour Conference has reiterated that the minimum wages should be fixed on the basis of that formula. Mm -hmm. And the trade unions have been demanding 18,000 per month as minimum wage. And uh, that is not because uh, that actually is as per the formula, but because the government itself has accepted that. Mm -hmm. And the Seventh Pay Commission has recommended that and the government has accepted that. Actually, even at that time, the Central Government Employees Confederation, they were saying that in 2015, the minimum wage as per the formula will be 26,000. But uh, instead of implementing that, now what the government has appointed a, a committee, a so-called expert committee to decide the procedure for, implement, uh, for uh, deciding the minimum wages and that has uh, uh, given some formula. And uh, as per that, they have fixed five regional wages, not a uniform wage all over the country, national minimum wage, but and it ranges from around 8,000 something to 11,000 something in different places. So, it is not only half, even half of what the trade unions are demanding. And along with that, the code on wages, it uh, incorporates the Minimum Wages Act, the Payment of Wages Act the Equal Remuneration Act and the Poiment of Bonus Act, four acts and these acts will be repealed. And similarly in the case of the Code on Occupational uh, Health and Safety at Workplace. So on that also the existing acts, around 13 acts which are at present providing some benefits to the concerned workers, they are sector specific like the Plantation Workers Act, even the uh, Journalists, Working Journalists Act and the Medical Represent Sales Representatives Act, then uh, the Construction Building and Construction, BD Workers. So, all these acts will be repeated. And in the Code on Wages and this also, the definition of the worker and employee, it is creating confusion. And uh, what these acts are saying that these provisions will be provided to the employees. And uh, the working journalists and sales promotion employees, they are defined as workers. So, while the specific acts which at present provide some benefits to these employees, they will be repealed, but they will not be covered because of their definition, they are said that they are employees, not, uh, I mean they are covered as workers, not as employees, they are defined as workers and uh, the acts will be applicable to employees. So, there will be a confusion and uh, on that pretext, they will be eliminated from all the benefits. So, that is why we have been opposing and we have called all the central trade unions except BMS have called for joint actions on 2nd August. So, these uh, changes they are being introduced as this re-elected government's 100 day plan of action. Yeah. 
in which they're calling these big bang economic reforms in order to increase the ease of doing business and uh, encourage more foreign investment. But in this process, there are also some very other crucial uh, provisions that are being diluted, such as uh, the provisions on uh, regulations on workplace inspections and also health and safety. Yeah, that, that health and safety is in this code. Yeah. The other uh, thing is uh, in the regulations etc. related to health and safety. And uh, the other thing is that the representatives of the workers, the trade union leaders, they cannot even raise the issues with the employers as per this uh, uh, latest code on occupational okay. health and safety. The other codes that are already been drafted mm -hmm. and uh, on the issue of uh, this industrial relations, code on industrial relations and code on social security, these two drafts are yet to be introduced. Mm -hmm. But they have been discussed before the elections. This government has drafted these bills and they have discussed with the trade unions. And there also the trade unions have opposed mm -hmm. this, particularly the uh, increase in the number of threshold level for the application of uh, these things, that is the, for the permission. Mm -hmm. At present, the factories which are, have 100 workers, they have to take permission from the government if the workers have to be retrenched or foreclosure. Mm -hmm. But now that threshold, the government wants to increase to 300. Okay. Already the Rajasthan state government, the BJP government, earlier government, they have done that. And at that time, the central government has sent letters to all the state governments that they should follow the Rajasthan example for ease of doing business. Mm -hmm. And uh, if that is done, that is if the threshold level is increased from 100 to 300, even today, the number of establishments or factories covered by the Industrial Disputes Act is very low. Mm -hmm. And if this is uh, implemented, then around 70 percent of the few establishments covered today, they will be eliminated from the coverage. So around 80, 90 percent of the workers will be eliminated, they will be removed from the purview of these uh, acts at all. So as it is in our country, 93 percent of the workers in the unorganized sector, they are not covered by the Industrial Disputes Act and all these acts. Uh, and then out of the 7 percent, the number of factories that are covered uh, by these acts, depending upon the number of threshold, number of workers, etc., that is even less. Then of those who are covered, 70 percent will be eliminated. So very few people will be covered. So the government's argument that it will promote ease of doing business itself is not correct because that is not preventing the ease of doing business. Yeah. They do not want to invest because they do not have the market. The main thing for the uh, investment is if the market is there then they will be ready to invest. Now the purchasing power is low and the um, people they do not have the purchasing power and they, they do not they can't sell their products so that is one of the reasons for not investing. Mm -hmm. So instead of addressing that issue putting money in the pockets of the people, increasing their wages, increasing, improving their working conditions, particularly improving employment, it is not possible. What they are saying is that it will provide employment by doing ease of uh, making ease of doing business by improving that, they say that it will provide employment. But today there is no evidence that by removing uh, the workers from their benefits, and that will attract ease of doing business and then through that employment will be promoted. Even ILO says that it does not happen. So only for the benefit of the corporates, our uh, domestic or uh, international, multinational, that is what the government is doing, particularly today in the context of the crisis. They want to attract investment, they come to India and exploit our workers by removing all regulations mm -hmm. so that their profits they can protect or increase except that it is not and that can be uh, means we can come to that conclusion from the uh, announcement or uh, the statement of the vice president vice chairman of the niti ayog mm -hmm. so after the elections mm -hmm. even as the government was taking oath what he said that the foreign investors will be will have a reason to be happy it is not the people or the workers who have voted for the government 
who need to be happy, but it is the foreign investors who will be happy with the policies with the big bang reforms that is the labor law amendments, then the disinvestment and the land pooling, uh, these three measures that they are going to do. And uh, how are these regulations, the dilution of these regulations and the removal of these uh, provisions for workers going to impact the unorganized and the informal sector in particular? See, there will be a lot of pressure. Already large number of workers are in the informal sector mm -hmm. and they, don't, they are not covered. And these workers also, they will be uh, thrown because of the unemployment situation. Uh, the, the higher end po fire policy, if that is implemented, the workers as per the requirement of the employers, they will be thrown out of employment. Mm -hmm. So when the workers will lose their employment, mm -hmm. naturally when there is a large number of unemployment people, then the bargaining power of workers, whether it is in the unorganized sector or unorganized sector, that will worsen. Even today the unorganized sector workers do not have that much bargaining power because uh, they are not, um, most of the laws are not applicable to them. So it will further worsen. And now the government has fixed what the minimum wages, flo floor level minimum wages mm -hmm. as 178. That is what they said, only 2 rupees have been increased. Yeah. So this 18,000 is not there and even the 375 is not there, what the government according to that uh, expert committee mm -hmm. and now it is 178. And that how far it will be implemented, there is no machinery for implementation, even the few benefits or wherever they get that. So the wages, working conditions, they will get worsened. And the government says that this social security code will be universally applicable. But now actually the provident fund and ESI which are there, they will also be repealed. Hmm. Actually, they said that they, all these acts are merged, around yeah. 14 acts are merged in the Social Security Code. Oh. In that EPF Act is there, ESI Act is there, Building and Other Construction Workers Act is there, Maternity Benefit Act is there. So all these acts will be repealed once the code comes into uh, force. But at the same time, what is the guarantee and what is the uh, means uh, implementation, where are the funds, whether the government will be allotting adequate funds for the coverage, that there is no uh, clarity on that. The government is not saying that we are going to allocate these funds for this, providing these things. So in that situation, the unorganized sector workers will not benefit. Even the different pension schemes that the government announced, the worker has to contribute up to his 60 years. And he will get, get the benefit only after he reaches 60 years. Mm -hmm. So he cannot withdraw his money. So in the PVF, EPF Act, you can withdraw your money uh, according to there are some provisions. But here they, he will not be able to uh, withdraw the money. So he, can, he has to go on contributing and then his money also he cannot withdraw and only he will get pension after he is. 60 years. So a worker who is today say 20 years or so, for around 40 years he has to continue to contribute. Only after that he may get and what will be the value of that money, the pension he will get nobody can say today. So instead of applying the EPF existing acts, what we want is the existing EPF Act, ESA Act, they should be made applicable. Now, unless you have 20 workers, EPF Act is not applicable, 10 workers, ESA is not applicable. So what we want is that even if there is one worker, mm -hmm. you have to make it applicable and provide the infrastructure and the benefits to all the workers. And uh, moving on to the issue of privatization and disinvestment, which is also a major part of this 100 day plan. Uh, according to Niti Aayog, the government think tank, over 42 companies are being targeted, targeted for either privatization or closing down. So how is this going to impact workers' rights and the employment situation in the country? Disinvestment and privatization is whether they may not apply, uh, impact the uh, employment situation immediately. But one thing is that the public sector enterprises are the wealth of the nation. And they have been uh, means uh, uh, contributing to the 
country's development in a very huge manner, providing employment opportunities in the rural areas, sometimes in the tribal areas, uh, providing the government with the resources, paying the taxes and other uh, benefits, etc., etc., dividends, all these things. They have been regularly doing that. And now, disinvestment type privatization, they say that even profit making things will be privatized. So, what the uh, vice chairman has said, Niti Ayog, that they will put on the public sector undertakings on a conveyor belt. Mm. belt. So, they will be putting on these things, so selling off. It is mainly to selling off the, our national's wealth. So, that is where the labor laws will be applicable, where actually in the public sector labor laws are applicable. Yeah. The workers have trade union rights and there is uh, this uh, bargaining, bargaining, collective bargaining of the workers with the managements and these things take place. But in the private sector, the employers even do not uh, talk to the unions hmm. generally, particularly the multinational corporations, they do not talk even to the unions. So, the bargaining power of the workers will come down and then there will be uh, now they are talking about compulsory retirement scheme in the railways. Hmm. So, that way the retirement scheme, all these things will take place, mergers and so many things. So, ultimately the workers existing benefits will not be available to them. The number of workers in the name of uh, right sizing uh, or uh, this thing, regulation, uh, regulation that they are uh, bringing down. Uh, means not in uh, retrenchment, but it is a form of retrenchment like compulsory retirement. Yeah. In the railways they are asking lists for 55 years, those who are above 55 years, now they are asking lists and uh, also those uh, who have worked for more than 30 years. Mm. So that way they want to regulate the number of employees. Mm -hmm. So and particularly one of the serious things that they are doing is the railways. In the railways, this public sector undertakings, they, are, uh, they have decided. And uh, railways also, uh, which is a cheap method of transport for the common people, it is two sided. One is for the passengers, for the common people. Second is for the workers and employees yeah. there. And uh, our production units, now they have decided to corporatize. Mm -hmm. And corporatization, the railway minister is saying that it is not privatization. But once they are corporatized, then as a department the railways are giving orders to the railway, these production units. Now they will be asked to compete with the other corporations, including multinational and foreign companies. Mm -hmm. So it is, there is no guarantee that they will be given work. So already they have stopped giving work and they are outsourcing. Mm -hmm. It is not that uh, they are not producing as per targets or the quality is bad, it is not like that. Even in recently in the parliament, the minister has replied that they are producing as per targets and uh, the so called uh, Vande Bharat Express, yeah. uh, it is uh, produced in our Chennai ICF. Mm. So, we have the capability and uh, our workers are able to produce, but even then the orders are uh, curtailed and they, they have to compete with the other companies, foreign companies and if Alstrom and General Electric they can come, they will come, then it will be difficult. Mm -hmm. So in that way, our instead of actually making in India, our indigenous production capacity is being destroyed. So that is the danger. Mm -hmm. So instead of developing that, it is being destroyed. So, that is a loss for the nation entirely, it is not only for the workers, workers will lose their jobs that is and similarly the workshops also, they are also work is being outsourced, they are kept idle and now they want to run trains, private trains, mm -hmm. you know, to start with they are giving to IRCTC and they will including uh, the Rajdhani and Shatabdi trains, they will run, they will decide the ticketing, they will uh, decide the uh, provisions and in-house uh, services etc. inside the train. And the government has also decided that they will curtail the subsidies. Yeah. At present, the government is giving 43 percent subsidies to the passengers. Only 57 percent is borne by the passengers. Now they say uh, that they will reduce and gradually uh, totally uh, remove the subsidies, then the fares will almost double. 
So that today the passengers who are travelling in Indian railways, they are mostly common people and poor people. The comparatively well to do are using the airlines, they are travelling by air. But the railway passengers are mostly poor and common people and uh, the daily passengers, employees etc. So it will be a burden on them. So that way both the passengers will lose and this also they are doing because when the private players are coming to run the trains, they will not provide any passenger uh, subsidies. Yeah. So then they will not have the market. So facilitate their getting profits. The government is bringing down the subsidies for the common people. Mm -hmm. So the entire thing, the policy of the government to curtail the rights and benefits of the common people, put burdens on them for the benefit, for the profits of the big corporates. So that is why we are opposing. And uh, finally, what are the uh, main demands your, uh, the trade unions are putting forth in this 2nd August, of, uh, 2nd August protest? Mm. And uh, Yeah, immediately on 2nd August is to withdraw this, mm. withdraw uh, entire these labour codes which we have been opposing So um, and privatisation. Privatization, uh, disinvestment or outright uh, sale, strategic sale etc. We want that we, they have to be de uh, withdrawn and these labour courts also should be uh, uh, not applicable, not passed and the welfare benefits for the workers should be increased. The EPF and ESI, they have to be applicable to all the workers. Minimum wages, now in the recent uh, uh, memorandum to the finance minister before the budget, all the trade unions have demanded that the minimum wages should be 20,000 because the 18,000 demand was placed in 2016. So with uh, in the three years, the wages have increased. So we are demanding that, I mean the uh, prices have increased. So we are demanding minimum wage of 20,000, social security benefits to all, including pension of 6,000, no privatization and also particularly the defence and uh, the railways, uh, they should be strengthened, no privatisation. These are the basic demands at present. But our basic jo 12 point chart of demands, that is also there, but in this we are focusing on these demands. So what is the future plan of action in case the government does not listen to these demands that are being put forth on the 2nd of August? Yeah, all the central trade unions have given this call. Uh, except BMS and the railway workers on struggle in all the production units there have been strikes and mobilizations, dharnas, protests etc. In Varanasi the Prime Minister's constituency the DLW workers they have demonstrated half naked when the Prime Minister went there in all the other production units also Chittaranjan locomotives, Kapurthala, Chennai, Rai Bareli etc. demonstrations are taking place and that conventions are being held against this corporatization and uh, uh, privatization of the railways. Similarly, defense employees, all the defense units, they have come together and they have also uh, given a call for demonstrations and protest. They have not decided the date, but they said that they will be going on a 30 day strike mm -hmm. to start with and the uh, notice for strike also will be submitted, they are taking a strike ballot, so they are on the struggle path. And the trade unions will be meeting on second evening and there they will decide the future action. If the government does not heed to the voices of the workers, then the trade unions will decide and uh, uh, depending upon the response of the government, will take up a, uh, will try to intensify the struggle further. Thank you for joining us today comrade. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you for watching News Click.